Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number 15 of the series where I'm learning how to use my CNC machine to build this guitar right here. Now we're all done with the CNC work, but uh, if you'd like to check that out, I'll go ahead and post a link up here for the entire series. You can go back and check it out and watch me try to figure out how to use that machine over there. And I think I did okay because this thing's coming out pretty cool. So this is a Tele type uh, guitar. I used the Tele uh, shape as my initial design, and I took it, you know, I took it in my own direction. I did P90 pickups. Um, I've got uh, set neck. I did a tilt back headstock, uh, three by three tuners. I did that type of thing. So I made it my own deal, but it's still kind of based on the original Tele design. So this video is going to be part three of the finishing of this guitar. So in part one, uh, we final sanded the entire, all the woodworking on the body and the neck, and we applied two rounds of Simtech sealer. And in part two, we did a three-part uh, paint job on this guitar. We did a black base coat, and then I did a mid coat that was a pearl dust mixed in a clear base. And then on top of that, I shot a candy uh, top coat, which is a semi-transparent top coat that's uh, the name of its brandy wine. Uh, and at the end of that, then I shot a couple coats of clear base on top of there, which allowed me to, to walk away from this job for a couple of days uh, so I can get back to my regular day job. And then I'm able to sand that clear base and uh, get on with the clear finish on this, which is what we're going to do in this video. So if you remember in the, last, uh, in the last video, part two of the finishing of this guitar, I mentioned I was going to spray those couple of uh, base coats of clear on there. And when I did, I discovered a problem with my uh, little spray booth there. I was, getting a, I was getting a lot of blowback from out of the booth, and I got a lot of overspray on this thing. So I had to reconfigure my booth. I had to rebuild it and, uh, or figure out how to fix the problem I was having with it. And I've done that. And then I sprayed this again a couple of nights ago. And, uh, and now we're ready to move forward with uh, where I thought it was at the, at the end of the last one. And I'll get into that in just a second. Uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you what I did to my spray booth to improve it. And I've had some questions about my little mobile spray booth, so I'm going to kind of show you a little bit about that too while I'm sanding this up. So the finish we're uh, going to be spraying on this guitar here in just a few minutes is this stuff uh, right here. It's uh, Tamco's HC2104. It's a Euroclear. It's a high solids, high gloss clear. And being high solids, it really it builds up quickly as far as the thickness of the finish. So I'm hoping if all, everything goes well, I'll be able to do it in, in maybe three coats. Just do one round, apply a half coat, and then maybe two or three coats on top of that. And hopefully that'll be enough if I get a nice finish. I'm just learning and my spray technique's getting better all the time and all that. But if everything goes well, I may be able to do it with just a one round or about three coats. And we're about ready to get going on that. Uh, but what I'm going to need to do now to prepare this, uh, to prepare this guitar to, uh, to take that paint on it, uh, I've got this base clear I have on here, which is a sandable finish. And I'm going to go through the same process I did in the last two videos in this series, uh, where I sand it with this Super Asilix paper. This is a 600 grit. I'm going to do exactly the same. All I'm really trying to do, there's a very mild, uh, there's a very mild orange peel on this right now that... Uh, after I fixed my booth, this really has made a huge improvement in how, uh, how well I sprayed, or how well uh, it didn't get any overspray on it. And so I think I'm going to have just a very light sanding to do on this thing. And part of what I want to sand too is right here, now this neck was all masked off before, if you remember when I sprayed the paint on here. And so I have a little ridge right here where it goes from the painted part of the body up to the unpainted part of the neck. And so what I've got to do is I have to build basically a bridge over that little, uh, that little ridge I have going through there, and I'm doing that with my clears. I already sprayed about three coats of the uh, base coat. When I spray this, you can see, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but up to here it's uh, got the base coat on it. So as I was spraying the body, I went ahead and sprayed over that too, and I'm kind of I'm bridging that little ridge in there in between the two. And I'm going to continue doing that with the clear too, so that'll probably get a little extra clear right in through here as I'm spraying along. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this 600 grit, and while I'm sanding the entire body, I'm also going to come here and I'm going to sand this edge, and probably sand this a little bit more than the rest of the body, with the intention of knocking down that little ridge in between the two, because you want a perfectly smooth transition. You don't want to feel any ridge or any difference. You just want it to flow right from the wood of the neck 
right onto the painted body. And that's what we're going to focus on now too. So I'm not going to get into a huge amount of detail on sanding this thing. I will show you a couple clips of me doing it. But if you want to see me sanding, just watch the first two uh, parts of this. And I'm doing exactly the same thing, just with the focus, a little extra focus on this spot right here to get rid of that ridge. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn down the camera right now and uh, show you me getting started on this. And we're going to get ready to go ahead and paint this thing with clear. So I've had a couple of questions about my little portable spray booth I made here, and I thought I'd take a minute to uh, show you since I also figured out a problem I had with it and I was able to come up with a solution for it. So um, as you probably know, I've got a relatively small little shop in here and it's pretty much jam packed full of tools and everything. So I've got a very limited amount of space and last summer I took a couple of months and I kind of reconfigured everything. I actually even added a little bit of space over here where my bench and my tools are hanging on the wall. And then I reconfigured all of my tool layout and I actually did a vacuum system too, which is awesome. If, uh, if you ever have the opportunity to have one, that would be, it's, it's really been great. But anyway, so in part of my uh, redesign in my little shop, uh, I was trying to come up with a way of storing my paint products, which I do right over in that set of shelves over there, and to try to keep the dust off them because all those cans, and so every time you pull out a can out of there, when it used to sit on the open shelves, it was just covered in dust and it was basically a hard thing to keep clean. It was just always a mess. And uh, so the solution I came up with is I built my uh, little uh, portable spray booth and now I have filters on it up here and I'll get into that in a second. But when the filters aren't in there, this is a, a deep box. It's about a 16 inch deep box on wheels. Okay. And there's a fixed shelf right in here. And uh, when I'm not using it, oh, and this is where I, this is where the, uh, I hang my guitar off of this. And this, this here flips back and folds back on top, okay, it's on a hinge. And what I could do is when I'm not using my spray booth, I could just rotate it around like this on its wheels, wheel it over there and I push it up against the wall and those shelves fit right in this cavity right in here and it works really well. And uh, so the, the fan is mounted down here at the bottom. Let me spin it around, see if I can show you. So the fan is down here and it's just, uh, it's just one of those round fans and it blows pretty, it, it moves a lot of air, it blows pretty good. And what I do is, and that, and that always, that's fixed in there, that always stays in there. And you see this line of screws, that's where my shelf is. And this is the uh, cavity up here that basically covers up those shelves. And so what I do is when I'm not, uh, when it's not covering up the shelves, I bring it over here and open up this door and it's raining right now. And I could just wheel it over into place here. As 
something like that and it fits right over the door opening and I've got a little metal bracket over here and I've got a little metal bracket over here and I just put two screws in the thing and it hangs right here and I've got a plug that comes out of this side here and I plug it right in to a six-way plug strip right there and I use that plug strip to turn the fan on and off. Uh, so anyway, so before and I'll, I'll try to stick a clip in there when I was spraying in the last video the guitar would hang here Oh, and incidentally, this is where my spray guns hang over here, too, so they're very handy. I could just hang them there when I'm spraying. So I'd hang my guitar right here, and I would spray, and I got the fan. Now, this didn't have a cover on it before. I'd have the fan blowing, and my theory was I would spray here, and that fan's blowing down here, and it would suck all the fumes down and out, which it basically did. But part of the problem was, as I'm spraying, of course, all the overspray is going back into this cavity, and then it would kind of blow back out of the cavity and get on the guitar. And it wasn't that bad because I've done, I probably sprayed three, maybe four guitars in this thing, configured exactly like I described. And it wasn't really a problem, but every time I would spray, the overspray would start building up inside this cavity. And it almost got to be, it felt like sandpaper in there. So what was happening was every time I go to spray something new, some of that overspray would break loose from there and it was getting on my guitar that I would be spraying coats of uh, uh, the clear base I sprayed on here, it had just gotten out of hand and gotten too bad. And that thing looked like a little furry woodland creature or something like that, because so much junk blew out of there. So I thought, well, I've got to fix this somehow or another. Um, obviously, the fan being down low, it just wasn't working. It wasn't drawing the fumes right out. I thought about maybe lining the inside of this thing with cardboard and every couple guitars change out the cardboard or whatever. Then I got to thinking what I ought to do, and this is what I did, I thought, well, let me cover this uh, uh, cavity down here where the fan is, and that fixed shelf that's in there, I cut out the entire shelf, so that's just wide open now. So it has the fan down here, the open space here, and then I took these filters, these are air conditioning filters I bought from the hardware store, and I just stapled these air conditioning filters over this hole, and uh, so now when I spray, all the, you, and you can feel the vacuum on this whole thing. Even though the fan's down here, there's a very, very equal vacuum going across this whole thing. So now when I spray it, the uh, overspray is getting sucked directly out. And anything that would stick to this, uh, it's just going to kind of cling to the fibers of those filters. And when they get plugged, I'll just yank them off and throw them away. They're only a couple dollars a piece. I'll take them off, throw them away, and staple some more up there, and I'll be able to go. And uh, so anyway, so I, I fixed it, and then I resprayed that clear base on there. And boy, it came out so much nicer. I mean, this really works out well. Uh, and each time I'm done now, you know, I only spray, you know, maybe at the most once a month I'll be spraying in here. So when I do get ready to spray, all I got to do is I got to staple these back up. Uh, do my spraying and then I just take them off when I'm done and I still have the cavity up here which I could wheel it over there and cover up my shelves. So anyway, I thought it was a great idea uh, that I came up with in the first place. Uh, it was a good idea because I conserved a lot of space and I kept the dust off my cans and stuff over there. Uh, but the better idea was uh, putting these filters on here and closing up that bottom and now it really works great. And hopefully when I spray this clear gloss on here in a couple of minutes, you'll be able to see that. Hopefully it's going to come out great. Anyway, those couple of folks out there that asked about this, I thought I'd show it. And, uh, and I really like the way it works. If you've got a tight little shop and you need a spray booth and all that kind of stuff, you might consider some configuration like this because it's, it's really worked well.
Well, guys, I think we'll leave it about there for now. I'll tell you that Tamco Zero Clear, when that clear goes on there, it really brings out the colors. I mean, you can see that, that sparkly uh, mid-layer in there, that pearl dust, just looks awesome. And I tell you, I'm, I'm very happy with my spray booth. It worked out really well. Uh, I have almost zero dust on here. I think I got the settings on the gun just right. I've got very little orange peel. I'll definitely have to give it a light sanding, probably with uh, 800 grit or something like that before I buff it out. But, but gosh, I'm thrilled to death. I really am. I'm, uh, I'm always very happy at this stage when everything just looks, looks like it does. I put uh, a very light tack coat on there first. And I think I, I didn't really count, but I think I did four flow coats on top of that. So with this high build uh, Tamco Clear, uh, that's a lot of finish on there. So I've got plenty in there. I could sand it and buff it, and I shouldn't have to worry about cutting through anything. Anyway, uh, I hope somebody got a little something out of this. I enjoyed showing you all my little uh, mobile spray booth here. And uh, anyway, uh, God bless you. Come on back next time if you dig this sort of thing, and we'll see you all in the next one.